In this lesson, we'll continue building our walkie-talkie body by drawing our main body curves. Now, we're not going to get into all the detail of these little parts here. We're strictly going to draw the main outline curves that will allow us to build our body. Before I start building the body, I do want to draw a couple of guide curves. So the first one is going to be the vertical center line. And I'll just click on my polyline tool for that. And because of where we placed our picture frame directly in the world center, I know I can just type 0 to place the first point right at my 0, 0 line. And I can hold down my shift key and bring it up above the image and click again. And that's going to give me my vertical line. And then I'll zoom in just a little bit. And under polyline, if I hold this down so it flies out, and you go over here, this icon represents a line from the midpoint. Click on that. And now wherever I click to start drawing is actually going to be the midpoint of the curve. And notice as I move in here, my midpoint snap actually snaps to the picture frame first. So be careful of that. It is showing me that it's red, which shows me it's on the red layer. And then I get my snap here to this endpoint line. I click to place the middle. And I hold my shift key and drag out to the left. And then click again. I have my two guide curves. I'll select both of those. And under Properties, I'll click on this rainbow ring. And under Line Type, I'm going to switch these both to center lines. And that's going to give me a nice dashed line, so it makes things easy to see, and I can tell that these are just guide curves. I'll select both of them, and I'm going to lock them by pressing Control l And that locks my guide curves. So now that I have those, I can start drawing my main curves. And what we'll be drawing in this particular chapter is going to be this curve coming up here, and then our curve that cuts across the top. And because this is symmetrical, we only need to draw one side of our object, and then we'll mirror things over. So I'll start by drawing this wavy curve. And we're not going to try and draw all of this detail. This is something we'll add later. And the reason for that is you want a much cleaner surface to start with. And then any of your kind of design details are much easier or much better to put in after the fact after we put in our large radiuses and all the other nice details that we're going to put in here. So I'm going to use the control point curve to draw this. And I'll click on that. And I want the start of my curve to be right here at the middle. I want the start of this curve to be right at the intersection of my vertical center line and my ground plane line. So I'll click right there. Now it may seem that you wanted to start drawing over here. If I do that, what I'm going to end up with is a point at the center when I mirror my curve across. So what I need to do is hold down my Shift key, and I'll drag out to about here, and then click. And what that's going to do is it puts this second point on exactly the same plane as that first point, and that gives me a tangent curve going across that center line. And then I'll add some clicks. Now Rhino's a little different to draw coming from an Illustrator or something like that. And what you do is as you're drawing, you're just going to kind of draw close to what you want at first. And then we come back in and we're going to edit our curves. And I try to do this without adding too many curves. And I'm also going to draw my curve above and beyond the actual body that I want. So I'm going to make my last click up there. And then I'll press Enter to finish applying that line. So as you'll notice, the line doesn't match up perfectly. And that's fine. I'll select the line. And then I'll hit F10 to switch on my control points. I'm going to drag my control points around to go ahead and get this curve to line up. And I already think I may have too many control points here. So I'll just click that one, and I'll hit Delete. And notice as soon as I do that, because that point's not controlling and pulling this curve out here, the whole curve kind of moves in. And that's fine. That's not really an issue. I can just grab this point and move it around to bring that curve back out. Now you notice I have these green and red lines. And that's because I'm using the gumball manipulator. Let me just go ahead and switch that off. And that can be very nice, and I do use it quite often. It took me a little while to get used to it, and for those of you who haven't been using it in Rhino 5, once you do get used to it, it's really nice to use. As I said, it did take a little while to get used to it, but for now I'll switch it off. So I'll just kind of grab the points and move them around. I do want to be very careful that this point here, if I move it, that I hold down the Shift key and just move it along that same line left or right, and I don't move it vertically. If I move it vertically, that's going to change this and make it not tangent across here, so we'll end up with a point. So I'll just kind of drag that, and I'm just visually lining this up. As I get near the edge of this image, you might see I get a snap going there. 
If that's kind of stopping me, I can temporarily disable my snaps by holding down Alt and then moving where I want and letting go. And we're not going to try and come into this area here. We're going to sort of ignore that and imagine the body still goes all the way through. And we'll just kind of keep moving these points so we get this pretty good. This one could probably come out just a little bit. And notice I got that snap happening again. So I instantly just kind of held down my Alt key to override that and to temporarily disable my object snaps. And I bring that just down a little bit more, I think. And we'll come out a tiny bit on this, and I think we should be good. Now, obviously, something like this you can kind of play around with for a long, long time until you get this just right. For the purposes of what we're doing, I think that's pretty good, though. So I'll just go ahead and I'll double tap the Escape key, and that switches off my control points. And now I'm going to draw my curve that represents the line cutting across here, which is the upper surface. Now I'm going to ignore these because the little details we'll be adding later. And it's really this line here I'm going to concentrate on. So again, I'm going to use my control point curve. And this time I'm going to go down into my object snaps. And I'm going to switch on my near snap. Now, I never have the near snap on because it just clicks on too many things. Notice if I put it on, as soon as I get near any line, it's just kind of firing and snapping the things. And I find it kind of gets in the way of things. But for this, it's very nice because I do want to snap to that center line. And if I'm not using it, I'm not going to be exactly sure if I'm on that line or not. So I'll move the cursor right to where that sketch line and my vertical line intersect. I'll click once. And now I'm going to come down and I'm just going to switch near off while I'm inside this command. Again, I don't really like it on all the time. I'll hold down my shift key and I'm going to click here. And I'm actually going to continue to hold down my shift and click one more time out here. Now by putting three control points in a row, that's going to give me G2 continuity or curvature continuity in this curve. So it's going to give me a very smooth curve going across when I mirror it. And for my last curve here, I'll just click somewhere down in this area. Now notice this comes out and then droops really fast. We are going to adjust that. So again, I'll select the curve, click F10, and this time I'm going to drag a box around those two. And I'll switch on my gumball. And I'm going to do that just so I constrain myself to moving only in this left and right direction. And I'll use the red arrow to accomplish that. So by moving these three control points just left to right, I've maintained curvature continuity through these lines. As you can see, I can choose the green arrow to move vertically. I can use the red arrow to move horizontally. Or if I click in the center, I can just move the part in either direction. I think that looks pretty good. So I'll just double tap Escape on the keyboard to switch off the control points. I'll go ahead and drag a bounding box from right to left. Select these two items. And I'll come over to here to Trim. And I'll click the lines where they extend beyond the body. So I've clicked right there. I'll hit Enter to finish that command. And with them still selected, I'll click on my Join command. And that's joined them together. I can now take the shape, and I'm going to mirror it over. So I'll go to Transform, Mirror. Or I can come down to the Transform menu here and select the mirror icon. Both exactly the same, just different ways to access them. Make sure I get an end snap on that line, and I'll hold down Shift and drag down or drag up, and then click. Now I've made a mirror of that line over to this side. I'll select both of these parts, and I'll click on Join. The object flashes, and my command line tells me I have two curves joined into one closed curve. I can deselect everything, and that's completed drawing our body curves.